Welcome to Worship Leader Hangout. Today, I'm showing you guys how we have all of our live streaming stuff set up. Last year, I did a video about our old system. We were using the Sling Studio, and I sold all that gear and some other gear and got all new stuff uh, to be able to have a much better, more uh, professional live streaming system. We are using the Ada Mini Extreme. We're using a Deck Link. We're using Purpose Center 7. We're using Restream. We're doing all the stuffs, and I want to show you how we have it all set up today. So come on, let's go. One of the main things that churches use are a software to get the image, the backgrounds for the lyrics, the videos, and whatever else they want on their main screen. The way we are getting this image, what you see on the screen right now, to our switcher is we're using a Blackmagic deck link. Gone are the days of using the secondary display of a computer to send it to the, the projector. We're not doing that anymore. We're using the Blackmagic deck link. We have been for a little while. Uh, we're, and we're running all four. It's the Blackmagic deck link, I think, Duo, which is a four channel or four output card that sits in a nice little housing and that goes to the computer via USB-C. And what's really cool is we can go to our screens and configure screens. And once that's all plugged in and set up properly, our main screen output can now be the Decklink Duo and that's channel three. And we have that going out uh, 1080p, 29.797 frames per second, so basically 30 frames per second. And then we also have a couple other things. We have the lower thirds coming out. That's very important. That's being sent to the Ada Mini Extreme, so our switcher as well. Uh, we have a lobby screen. I'm not really worried about that for this video. And then we have the stage screen, uh, which is our stage display that's like up here above our heads. So again, the main thing is our main screen and our lower thirds. And those are being sent directly to our switcher. And how we do that is plug in the Blackmagic Decklink Duo and it does its thing. And then it just shows up right here under output and you just select that. Now, and so that is being sent over there. And now the lower third, you do have to do a little bit of setup for that. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of setup. What you would want to do, what we have done is we go to the theme editor and we went ahead and made, a, if you go to lyric styles, this is where we decided to put it. I have it labeled right here. You can kind of see it says uh, CPC Live Lower Third. Yup. I don't know why I put that. Uh, but this is the one we use typically. It's just a simple font, white on a black background. And for those of you who know what I'm talking about, which I'm sure it's most of you, you can actually use a green background and do what's called a chroma key. But we're doing a luma key. We're doing the very simplest keying process possible on the Ada Mini Extreme, and that's doing a luma key, which you would want a black background with your lyrics. I don't know why it puts these bars behind there, but it doesn't look like that when it comes out. So I don't know why it's doing that right now. But it's just a simple text over your black background. And of course you can move this anywhere you want to on the screen and then move it in the Ada Mini later if you want to down at the bottom. But we go ahead and put it at the bottom on that lower third from Pro Presenter. That's just how we decided to do it. Once you have your theme created, then you can go over here to, to edit looks. And you see our main screen has everything. We want everything to be able to be seen on the main screen. And then we have the lower thirds. And I, I went ahead and labeled this Atom Channel 8. So that way we know exactly what channel that's going to on the Atom. Our main screen is going to Channel 7. Uh, because it is called Pro Presenter 7, why not take it to channel 7, right? Um, just keep those things consistent. What I do, what I don't want to see on the lower thirds are messages, props, announcements. Um, I do want to see slides if I decide to do that, uh, but I don't want to see media, media and I don't want to see the video input on that lower third. So I'll go ahead and unselect all of that. And then uh, with this presentation tab, I can select that and then select my lyric style. So no matter what my lyric style is, when, like no matter what theme I'm using for the main screen, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I can have a background rolling. I can have, you know, some words with the on top of the bars that look really nice and fancy. Uh, but no matter what I'm sending to the main screen, it's going to look like lower thirds 
over on our Ada Mini, so check that out. Now we're over here at the mission control, if you will, is our little mini mission control where we can see all of our camera feeds, we can see our audio. Before we go and dive into the switcher and how I have it set up, I wanna talk about audio. We're using the M32 by Midas and we're multi-track recording with the, uh, the USB-C card on the back of that. And it's running over to the iMac and we're using Logic Pro. Uh, like the newest version of Logic Pro uh, to multi-track record. The reason why we multi-track record, we wanna be able to go into Logic and mix this and master it in the, best that, in the best way that we can to make it sound as best as possible for our live stream. So to send our audio to the Atom, we are using a, an eighth inch cable and that's coming out of the back of the computer via eighth inch, going into one of the ports, the eighth inch ports on the Atom Mini Extreme. And the reason why I'm using an, an eighth inch and not like a quarter inch or an XLR is because that's simply what is allowed on the Ada Mini Extreme. So why not just do that straight from the computer itself? I want all the audio from this computer uh, to be sent to the Atom as well. Then to be able to hear that audio, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. This is a recording that we had from this past Sunday. Uh, to be able to hear that audio, we want to have that mic one on and we can go over here to our uh, Atom control software, click on audio, and we can see that audio jumping right now. And because we're using wireless video transmitters, more on that in just a second, uh, we do have a little bit of latency, so not even half a second, but what I have to do is I have to go up here and add that latency from the audio so that way it, we match it perfectly with our video. And so we determined uh, we can go anywhere from between five and eight frames of delay is what they call it on the Atom software. Uh, we can, we just rock it at eight and it, it just, it matches up perfectly. One more thing on the audio, if we wanna monitor audio, I went ahead and set up some, uh, some headphones right here that we can just, you know, grab up under the table, you know, throw those on. And what's cool about the Atom Mini is it has a, a, a headphone jack, the Ada Mini Extreme. Some of them don't have a headphone jack, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but if we do want to hear this audio, and this is also how we mix the audio as well. It comes through the Atom and we can just press that mute button. Now let's get into the video stuff. As you can see on our multi-view, we have the two cameras ready to go and they are plugged into channels three and channel four. So we have a, a center view, and which also has a person. They have the ability to, you know, they can zoom in, get some tight shots. They can, you know, uh, pan back and forth with the pastor as he's speaking, uh, you know, from like a belt waist level up to the top of his head kind of shot. And then our camera B is a mobile camera and they can just run around the room and get all kinds of really nice shots. And we switch those um, on channels three and channel four. The reason why it's channel three and channel four and not channel one and channel two is because we are using video transmitters by Hollyland called the Hollyland uh, Mars 400S Pro. Those transmitters will then send the video signal uh, to the receivers and we have the receivers plugged in via HDMI straight to here. If we had those plugged in to channels one and two, everything turns green and pink. Let me show you what in the world Black Magic in Hollyland. Why can't we work together on this thing? So as you can see, if I go to channel one or channel two with the Hollyland 400S Pro, it's green and pink. But I found out, I did. I went online, I was like, oh no, what's going on? And people are saying channels three through eight look great. One day we might run them uh, hardwired uh, via SDI, convert that over into uh, HDMI and then we'll be good to go. We won't have any latency or anything like that or have to set latency on our audio. It'll just be mm, just nice. And then on channel six, we don't have anything on five, but on channel six, we have a, a second display from our computer just in case we need it. And what we use that second display for is if we're, you know, just in the room and want to throw a video on the screen without using ProPresenter. So it's basically that second display, uh, like the old school way of putting a uh, you know, uh, pro presenter on the screen or anything on the screen. Uh, we had we went ahead and just sent that over to uh, the Ada Mini Extreme just to have that available. On channel seven, we have pro presenter. So anything coming from pro presenter, we see on channel seven. And then channel eight are our lower third lyrics like I showed you that we're sending. What's really cool about the Ada Mini Extreme is like you have this little mini mixer, if you will, within the full mixer. Because when I press these big buttons, you know, whether it's channel three, four, six, seven, or eight, uh, this view, the program view on our multi-view is what's 
going out live. Now, what's really cool is I can use the HDMI output, HDMI one output on the Mini Extreme to send to our main audience display and use this little mixer guy right here and put whatever I want to on the audience display. So the, like a, the main screen that the audience uses for their lyrics and whatever, and videos, things like that during the sermon. This is our main display, this is our stage right here above the computer. Uh, and what's really cool is I can put any feed that I want to on that display because I'm running from the HDMI one output and this video out is like, like I said, a little mini mixer within the whole mixer of itself. So I'm, I, I'm trying to find the right words to say about this, but like, look, I can put the multi view up on the main screen. I could put the, the program view. Program view is live. That's why I put in parentheses live. And then, you know, I could do a clean feed. I could do per presenter. I could do the lower thirds. I could do the desktop view. You know, if I wanted to put something from the desktop there, it's just really cool to have this. And I don't know how many people are running it like this, uh, but it's really cool to be able to have a camera show up on your main screen. And this is how we do that. Even if I, even if we were to run multiple projectors, we could still run out of this HDMI port into a device that then splits it into, for those multiple projectors. But we're only running one projector right now. I really like that capability. That's why I run the audience display from the Aiden Mini Extreme instead of from directly from the, uh, the, from the computer, from the deck link, because of all the capability I have within this switcher. Okay, and then those lower third lyrics, well, we talked about that earlier, coming from ProPresenter, which is channel eight on our, our switcher. Now, on your switcher software, um, the way that you set this up is, this is coming in uh, with just a black background with white text. So it would be a Luma key that we'd wanna do. There's other ways to key things out and make it, everything look pretty, use colors and all that stuff, but we just wanted to go simple, black text or white text on a black background. So we're gonna use a Luma key on our upstream key one, and our fill source is gonna be lyrics eight. So that's the channel. And then uh, our key source is gonna be lyrics eight. And it does its magic and it keys out, and I'll show you, because when if I go to camera, four or camera B, and then I wanna add the lyrics on top of that for our, our live stream. I can add the lyrics on top and it looks really good. And they can, and anybody watching the live stream can keep up with the lyrics um, as we are singing those. I'm gonna leave it on that. And the way I did the lyrics with just the touch of one button is I set up a macro on the Ada Mini Extreme. So the macro is a way to record a particular setting on the Ada Mini. So I recorded the fact that, okay, so when I press macro one, I want my lyrics to show up and already be keyed out. When I press macro two, I set it to where it just turns that uh, upstream key off. Lastly, with our multi-view display, I just wanna kinda of show you what we got on the display. We have program, that's our live view, that's what people are seeing live. This is our output, so our output one is the main screen. We have camera A, camera B, our desktop from that computer if we need it. We have ProPresenter 7 over here, and we have our hard drive for recording. We have our stream status right here, and then we have our lower thirds and our media player one. Media player one is just a picture or whatever you wanna put up on the screen randomly. Uh, I just put our logo there. All right, let's move to uh, recording. So to record your output, there, it's really to record your program, what's live. Uh, the best way to do that with the, well, that I've found, I'm sure there's other ways you could do it that look better, but the, the best and easiest way to do it is to connect a hard drive into one of your USB-C ports and use the, the the record function on the actual Ada Mini that it comes with. And it shows you how many hours, so we have 355 hours and 48 minutes, and it also shows you uh, how many gig is left on your drive. So it's a terabyte drive, we have 981 gig left, and we have 355 hours left. And to make it look really cool, what I can do is uh, fade to black right now. I can go to ProPresenter 7, and, or I can actually go to camera four, and then start recording. And then that'll come up red once you are recording. Now we're recording, you see REC at the top there on your multi-view, and I can unfade and boom, we're right in there with that first view or if you wanted to you know, throw your ad reel on the screen. And then to go live, so the next view right now, our live stream is off and to, it's so simple. So I'm gonna go over here to the Atom uh, software control and I have the output right here. So I take 
the stream key from Restream. I copy that and then take it over here to the output and I put that in and I select our platform and it automatically selects server and I want high quality. So uh, I'm gonna go back to palettes because we might need to make some changes on that. And then when I'm ready to go live, this is what's great about this is it's so easy. Uh, I wanna make sure on Restream I have whatever destinations uh, selected. I have them unselected right now so that way we don't actually go to that. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and press on air and immediately uh, the Ada Mini Extreme is online. It, it goes on air. You're live right now. So whatever your first view on your program view is what they see first. So now we see on Restream, we are live running that ad reel in however many minutes before service. And we're good to go. We have, we're recording and we're live at the same time. And to turn those off, to stop, all you gotta do, now what I would do is if I'm, you know, if I'm pretending so we have a uh, camera four. So say that's the last thing we're seeing online. I could fade to black on that camera four, fade to black and then go off air. Well, off air rather press the off button. And if I'm ready to stop recording, I can go ahead and hit stop recording and it stops it for me and it saves it on the drive, which is really cool. It saves it on that hard drive and I can take that hard drive to any computer and edit that. And all the, all the switches and uh, the audio and everything's already built into that recording and I don't have to edit it later. So that's the Ada Mini Extreme. That's everything that we have uh, plugged into it and how we use it and pretty much how we have everything set up. It's, it's actually pretty easy to use, especially for your volunteers when they know where everything is for the most part and what they have to do. They don't really need to know all the ins and outs, but I like to explain that and I like to talk about it uh, because it's good for them to know if there's a problem, they know how to fix it. We have a brand new room that I wanna show you. Our green room entrance is right here. And our media room, our gear locker was right here at this door. And I thought, well, you know what? We could lock these doors and not use these. And cause like, this is not good to be going in and out of these doors, especially during service. I mean, our auditorium, look, look, auditorium's right here. So let me show you this. Now we're still working on it. We got the first coat of black paint done. This is our gear locker. This will be, we're gonna put shelves on this side for all of our camera gear and uh, the things that we need for you know production in general. Um, and then on this side of the room, we're gonna put uh, shelving and, and, and ways to store all of our music gear. This is our former, or will be our former gear locker. Come on in. Um, and you can kind of see it's, it's, it's become a little bit of a mess because we know what's about to happen, but it's not enough space to store music and production gear. So that's what that's gonna be. Now this room, I'm excited. Along this wall, there's gonna be a nice table. On the walls, we're gonna put a couple TVs or probably you know some kind of larger monitor uh, for our program view and our multi-view. It's like what you saw out there, we're gonna have right here on this wall. Uh, I wanna have our online audio tech right here, um, hopefully running a board similar to what we're running out there. So that way they can mix on a board instead of on Logic. We'll still record the Logic, but I don't want to mix it on Logic forever. That's just not fun. So I'm excited about this room and the changes that's happening. Uh, check this out. Hold on. I found this sign, and so we got to put this up in this room. Probably right here. What do you think? What's cool is this already connected. There was already a door right here to this office, and I was like, you want to just keep the door open now. This office turned into our gear locker, or will turn into our gear locker, and we knocked a hole in the wall. I had some help. so. We just put a big old opening so that way we can go right into our pretty much brand new, newly updated green room. Check it out. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. I know that's a lot of information, a lot of little details. If there's anything I forgot or whatever, I'll try to put in. Uh, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Um, and there's a ton of tutorial videos on everything I talked about today. That's how I'm learning about it is literally YouTube and some friends that have already used some of this stuff. Uh, and I'm just showing you, like, it's really an update to our, how we live stream here at our church. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Remember, great worship leaders are always learning. We'll see you next time.